an underwater research station. Today on CNN 10, we're gonna explore that in depth. Get it? I'm Carl Azus. That story is just a few minutes away. First though, the US government is suing the Google technology company and 11 states have joined the lawsuit. Here's what this is about. The United States has antitrust laws designed to keep American businesses from having too much power. The US Justice Department says Google has broken those laws in part by keeping competitors from getting a foothold in the online search business. This could prevent Americans from ever getting to see the next Google, the next major search company, according to the Justice Department. But Google believes the lawsuit is deeply flawed. It says people use its search engine because they choose to, not because they're forced to or because they can't find alternatives. Those alternatives include Bing and Yahoo and DuckDuckGo, but 90% of all internet searches are made on Google. European officials have also fined Google billions of dollars for allegedly preventing competition. The company has appealed those fines and says it's made changes to address concerns in Europe, but Google isn't alone in these investigations. A recent U.S. congressional report says several major tech companies have too much power. It accuses Amazon of mistreating third-party sellers, Apple of preventing competition in its app store, Facebook of buying popular apps like Instagram and WhatsApp to prevent these companies from eventually competing with Facebook. All of these businesses have denied doing anything illegal. They've said they're successful because of their usefulness and popularity, not because they're trying to monopolize their industry. The suit involving Google is the largest antitrust case against a tech company in more than two decades, and it could be years before it's decided. A 1998 lawsuit between the U.S. government and Microsoft eventually led to limits on Microsoft's software business. 10 Second Trivia Which of these literary characters was the first to appear in print? Captain Nemo, Robinson Crusoe, Horatio Hornblower, or Captain Ahab? The castaway Robinson Crusoe first appeared in Daniel Defoe's novel in 1719. NASA currently has five active missions to Mars. There's the sixth one in partnership with the European Space Agency. We told you yesterday how there are plans to put 4G wireless technology on the moon, assuming a base gets built there. But experts estimate that more than 80% of the Earth's oceans have never been explored. Why are there so many efforts to map out other planets like Mars and Venus when we haven't fully mapped out our own? One reason, critics say, is because it's expensive. We don't have the technology to build a research station that can withstand deep ocean pressures, and even if we did, it would reportedly cost more to do that than to put one on the moon. Another reason is that some parts of the remote ocean floor that people have observed don't have a lot of features. It's like a desert, except for the strange creatures that sometimes float by. But supporters of ocean research are developing new keys to unlock the secrets of the sea. For me, the ocean is home. It's always been a source of curiosity. I feel more at home in the ocean than I do on land, for many reasons. Simply for the beauty of it, for the wow factor of an alien world, for the pragmatic reason to be able to answer questions that we simply don't have answers to. In 2014, Fabien Cousteau and his crew spent 31 days living under the ocean on an expedition called Mission 31. And he did so on this, an underwater habitat known as Aquarius. From a very young age, I was exposed to the underwater world. I've been scuba diving since my fourth birthday. I've been on expeditions with my family since I was seven. Fabian comes from a family of out-of-the-box thinkers. You may be familiar with his grandfather, Jacques Cousteau, the late explorer and innovator who pioneered underwater exploration technology. His most popular invention was a regulator valve for diving. It allowed humans to breathe underwater using an air tank. He called it the aqualung, but we simply refer to it as scuba. But even for Jacques, the ultimate dream was life aquatic. So in came Conshelf 1, the first ever underwater station that allowed him to live underwater for several days. It laid the framework for subsequent ocean habitats. 
One of the really neat points of Mission 31 based out of Aquarius is that for the first time on a Cousteau expedition, we had Wi-Fi at the bottom of the sea. It was arguably better than my apartment in New York City. <laughs> so we were able to reach over 100,000 students live through Skype in the classroom sessions and other platforms to really be able to show them both inside the habitat, which is pretty cool, it's like the International Space Station, and outside the habitat, all the critters and all the sea life, that fireworks display of activity that we're studying. I'm a firm believer that humans and technology must work together. And one of the things that we're missing is a modern undersea laboratory, a modern undersea habitat. And so a bigger, better, more advanced underwater habitat is already in the works. And its name is Project Proteus. We're planning on building something that is seven times or more the size of any other previous habitat in history. That allows for us for much longer deployments, larger teams. To be able to bring that to the bottom of the sea is absolutely paramount. Cousteau is just one of many modern thinkers building up and imagining the future of ocean technology. Architects are reshaping the way we interact with the Great Blue too. The famous Jacques Rougerie, who uh, pioneered some of the underwater habitats. Belgian architect Vincent Calbo has also conceptualized underwater ocean scrapers, while Danish firm BIG has imagined entire floating cities. We may travel deeper than ever before without physically moving out of our seats. Cousteau points to breakthroughs in automation and underwater mobility that could take us further than the naked eye can see. AUVs or autonomous vehicles are amazing. They have a very practical reason. Uh, they are able to go places for longer periods of time without having to have a human being on them. And just like Jules Verne's Nautilus, powering up these vehicles may one day be electric and even renewable. There's enough energy that could be extracted from the ocean to power the world's current needs without creating significant environmental impact. One such piece of technology is called OTEC, Ocean Thermal Energy Conversion. OTEC converts the cold water temperature from the deep water to the fairly warm surface temperature to create energy. Imagine how amazing that piece of technology could be to help solving some of the climate change related issues as we continue to develop, as we continue to expand, as we continue to add more people on this planet that will need that energy. So where does that leave us now? Will these breakthroughs take us further and deeper into the ocean and like Cousteau, we may one day find ourselves living there? Well, maybe not just yet. It is absolutely possible. Is it desirable? That is something I'm on the fence on. For now, just like his grandfather, the future of technology lays in exploring this untouched frontier. My grandfather, he was a pioneer. He inspired hundreds of millions around the world for over five decades. It opens my eyes to what is possible out there, what does need to happen, and what should be learned from our ocean world. Here's a Halloween decoration that's both a trick and a treat. It's a treat to see, assuming you're not afraid of absolutely horrifyingly green man-eating spiders, it's a trick from a retired toy maker who used a crane and a lot of ingenuity to build this disturbing decoration outside his home in upstate New York. He says 2020 was the perfect time to do this. But poor little Miss Muffet, I mean she'd have a heart attack if that spider sat down beside her. It would send anyone wandering away. It took a torrential lot of work to build. It wouldn't fit in any cellar. I mean, at that size, that thing can be anything but reclusive. I'm Carl Azus. You know, I bet Lakeville, Connecticut is beautiful this time of year. It's where we found Indian Mountain School. Thank you for subscribing and commenting at youtube.com slash CNN10.